Okay. Okay, so let's look at our Beyond Labs for this week and what we're trying to do here. The whole idea is right here. This is the reason for doing this. So we're doing a titration and in the titration, we have, we have to know what's in the burette or what's in the flask. But in this case, we will know what's in the burette and then we will find the mass percent of an unknown sample. So that's the point of this one. So we know how to do all the directions now, so that should not have be a problem. You will be graded based on your unknown. And then, you will have two methods. So this is very similar to what you did last week. So there's a method one and a method two. So the method one is your titration this one. So the method one is the color change. The method two is a curve. They're calling it the first derivative of the voltage versus volume, which is just a fancy, fancy way of saying a graph. So the second one is the graph. So it's just exactly what we did last week. So then they're giving you, okay, so here's your data table. So we will do similar to what we did last week. So your first three trials will be method one. And then your trial four and five will be method two. So it's exactly the same number of trials we did last week. So you have three trials with the color change and two trials with your graph. Please make sure that you let your graph go to the plateau. Remember, we always have a plateau. You don't wanna stop just right here. You wanna make sure you go all the way through. And if you go too far, there's no such thing on the graph. And the graph might go the other way, but just make sure you keep going long enough on the graph so you have all the data. Okay, so the ionic equation, so what I would suggest to you is on scratch paper, do the half reaction method. You get your stoichiometry. And the reason we can do that is because we know that we always have to balance the uh, electrons. And they're telling you what's happening here. So they're telling you it's an acidic, and we did an example of that in lecture. So remember, if it's an acidic, then what you would do is you just add a hydrogen ion, oops, yeah, hydrogen ion, to the reactants and water.
to the products. Demand balance. So you're gonna want to do this on scratch paper, but then just like we did in the lecture, you would cancel off the electrons on both sides and you cancel the spectator ions because they're only asking for the net ionic equation. Net ionic equation. But to get that net ionic equation, you need to do the half reaction method. They're also telling you what's happening. They're saying you start with iron two and that goes to iron three. So they're telling you what your reactant should be. And they're telling you also that your other reactant is you start with the MnO4 minus and that's reduced to Mn plus two. So you're gonna use this to balance your half reactions. And of course you have to answer all the questions. And then the mass percent. And then this is your point of this particular, ah, this one. This is what you're gonna be graded on. Okay, so we'll be graded on this. So you wanna make sure that you answer number 11 because that's what you're gonna get your points on. Cause this is, this is either perfect or wrong. And so you'll be graded based on your unknown, this percentage. So that will be your points. Okay, and then, Okay, so going to our lab activity. So we're gonna watch this because it's gonna help us with the experiment this week and it's pretty short. Electrochemical reactions are vital to many processes in technology and in the human body, and involve the transfer of electrons from one chemical species to another. These reactions are called reduction oxidation reactions or redox reactions. When a species loses electrons, it undergoes oxidation, and we say that it is oxidized. When a species gains electrons, it has undergone reduction, and we say that it is reduced. In an electrochemical galvanic cell, redox reactions occur spontaneously, which generate electrical energy. However, in an electrolytic cell, electrical energy is applied, which causes the redox reactions to occur. An electrolytic cell consists of the reaction solution, called the electrolyte, which contains any chemical species that are oxidized or reduced, as well as ions needed to enable electron flow. The electrolytic cell has two metal electrodes that are immersed in the electrolytic solution. An external circuit connects the two electrodes, which completes the circuit and enables us to apply voltage or current. The applied current or voltage is what causes the electrochemical reaction to take place. The oxidation half reaction occurs at the anode and the reduction half reaction occurs at the cathode. To help you differentiate between the two, remember the phrase red cat, which stands for reduction at cathode. But how do we determine which electrode is which? We can use the standard reduction potential of the metal electrodes, which is a measure of the metal's tendency to lose electrons. The higher the reduction potential, 
the more likely it is for the metal to be reduced. Let's say we place a silver electrode and a copper electrode in an electrolytic cell and apply current. The silver electrode has a higher reduction potential, so it is reduced and acts as the cathode. The copper electrode has a lower reduction potential, so it is oxidized and acts as the anode. One use of electrolytic cells is to perform electroplating, which is a reaction where one metal is oxidized and then reduced onto the surface of another metal. Since the anode is the metal doing the plating, in our example of silver and copper, the silver electrode is plated with a thin layer of copper. In this lab, you'll assemble an electrolytic cell and perform the electroplating process by plating a brass key with copper. Mom. Okay, so let me go to the PDFs. Let me find my PDFs. Where are they? Where did they go? There you go. Okay. So, ah. Okay, so this is what we're doing this week is electrochemistry, looking at a galvanic cell. And then uh, this is, oh, okay. Uh, wait, this is okay. Not a formal lab report. You guys have done plenty of formal lab reports. So this is not a formal lab report. Yay. Okay, so we have talked about uh, half reactions, reduction potentials, the Faraday constant. We have talked about a lot of this. And so this is just trying to impress upon you about all the batteries you use. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is keep referring Back to this equation. To use for your calculations. Okay, so if you look at this equation, you could start with your Coulombs per second, which is we see right here, what is a Coulomb per second? That is an amp. So technically you're starting with an amp here, like how, however many amps you have. But you would take that number of amps and you would put the units as Coulombs per second. And then if you had seconds and you had a mass, you would put those here. This is a constant. So this whole part is a constant. This is from the half reaction. 
of copper. So you would get this because we would have the copper. We would have the, the copper. This is saying that uh, copper zero is going, oh my God, that's supposed to be an arrow. Okay, it's going to copper plus two. Plus two electrons. Okay, well, okay, so that's how you would get this. And then this is the atomic mass of copper. So look what happens to all of our units. If we just do this one big long stoichiometric, um, as a unit analysis, we do this as one big long unit analysis, the moles of copper cancels with the moles of copper. Oh, wait. Oh, where the, where the moles go? Oh. Wait, my bad. Let me let me go back. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. Grams of copper cancel with grams of copper. Off electrons cancel with electrons. Seconds cancel with seconds. Uh, coulombs cancels with coulombs. Okay, so what do we end up with? We end up with atoms. How many atoms per mole? Which is Avogadro's number. So what we're saying is if you do this all in one dimensional analysis using your data of your amps and your data of your seconds and your data of your grams and your constant and the half reaction and the atomic mass, you would end up with atoms per mole, which is Avogadro's number. So that's how you would use this. So you don't have to write a procedure this week. Okay, and this is what you would do as far as the setup. And this is kind of what we looked at in lecture that you could set up the pieces of metal and then these are alligator clips. So you would use these alligator clips. because they look like alligators. And then this is, if you have no money, use a cheap piece of paper, but we actually have uh, glass. We have these YouTube glass, and then you, you put, uh, I will label this because you're like, oh. okay. So we would use this, it's a glass U2, and it's our salt bridge. And then you would have uh, cotton plugs. Okay, so these would be cotton plugs here. And then typically what we would do, because it's cheap, is we would make some like NaCl-Aq because so, salt's cheap. So we would have our salt bridge in the middle here, our salt bridge. We'd have beakers and then we would want to have inside we would typically have nitrate solutions. So we would have zinc nitrate on this one beaker and copper two nitrate oops, on the other beaker. So 
So there are solutions in here and we would use the nitrates because the nitrates are soluble. So you would set this up and then we have, we have voltmeters. You put, put, you would connect to the voltmeters. And then these are like cables. So that's how you would do that part of the experiment. And then this part of the experiment is the determination of the Avogadro number. And in the setup, you would have these, uh, we have the ammeters. So that's how you would get the amps. Okay, so you would read the amps from the ammeter. And then we have these two, the, whoa, okay, we have these power supplies. Okay, so this is a power supply. You can see you've plugged this alligator clip into the power supply and the other alligator clip into the ammeter. And then this, you can, this is a little connection here. You would connect the ammeter to the power supply. So you have the, a current, you have like a full circuit thingy. And it tells you how long you should do it, how many amps, and if you need to change the current and that kind of thing. And then of course we're not doing C. Okay, and then, oh yeah, you're gonna have to do the pre-lab on your own. I'm not doing the pre-lab for you this time. I think the answer's in the back anyway. See, like number one, number two, those are all in the back. Oh, look, number three is in the back of your lab manual too. Okay, well, oh, number four is in the back of your lab manual. My goodness, fine, whatever. Oh, you're gonna have to do this on your own. This is, and this is what we talked about, the cell notation. We talked about that in lecture. So, so this is that cell notation. So you're gonna probably wanna to refer to your lecture notes because we talked about the cell notation. And then this is referring to number five. Here's it. This is the same cell notation again. Oh, they're giving you a current. Okay, so notice when they give you the current, here we go. They give you the current in amperes. And then remember when you go back to the previous page, one of the previous pages. Oh, too far. I thought I saw it. Ah, oh, here. Okay, so remember whenever they're telling you about the amperes, that the units of amperes is a coulomb per a second. So you're gonna want to remember, you know, I remember this. Look, my mouth, my mouse skills are deteriorating. Okay, so when you see an ampere, you remember that it has units. The units you would use for the amperes are coulombs over seconds. Okay, so. All the questions. Of course, you're going to answer all the questions. And then now we have the results and discussion. 
And so you're going to be doing all of this. And oh, yeah. Oh, yep. Ooh. So, yes, everything. Yes. All right. 25. Yes. Okay. So. No, you don't have to do this because we're not doing it. We usually don't do this in the face-to-face -face classroom anyway, because we don't have all the chemicals. Okay, so now let us find our lab archives. Oh, it's good here. Oh. Okay. Okay, so experiment. Aha, here we go. Experiment 32. Okay, so here's your instructions. Okay, so there's a Word document here for you. Oh, look, there's your data. So, oh, so for part A, I'm just telling you answer the questions. And then part B is what you're going to do all the calculations. And this, this is just gives you the data, but you have to answer everything. So it's that, yeah, it says fill up the rest of the table on your own for run one and run two, answer all the questions. This is the data that you get. And then that long, okay, so that long uh, dimensional analysis that we referred to is what you're going to use. But then some of this, you have to look at the data and it's all labeled here and use this data to get everything else. And everyone's gonna use the same data. So you have to figure out how to answer these and figure out the whole rest of it. And then, So the title, pre-lab questions, you don't need the procedure, you don't need an introduction. Here's gonna be for your beyond labs. And then I'll look at your results and discussion. You don't need a conclusion. Okay, so that is your experiment for this week.